Hello and welcome to the order block extra section. So in this video, we're going to talk about the daily pip cycle. Now, the main thing that you have to realize is that daily pip cycle is an edge. Okay. And there is no guarantee with an edge. And you have to understand that sometimes the edge will play out and sometimes it won't. Okay. As long as you understand that you should be fine. Now, if you're on this video and you haven't finished the order block strategy, I suggest you go back and finish the strategy before jumping to here because I'm not going to go into detail about um, how to actually use uh, our entry pattern because that's already been taught. This is the order block extra section so you should already be aware of how to actually trade. So at this point uh, we need to understand the theory behind the daily uh, the daily pip cycle. Um, daily pip cycle is just the name that I gave it. I don't really know what it's called but um, it will make sense once I've explained it. So what actually happens in the market and how does it actually, how does it actually move? So generally what, what's considered, uh, the Asian session is considered to be um, a ranging session, okay? And then what happens, you're in London, when liquidity is high, you have a run of liquidity, it miti either mitigates something or whatever, but it just grabs liquidity from the Asian session and then you have that reversal. And then what happens after that is when it, when it comes to the US session, when the US opens, it either goes to it either becomes a reversal or it is a continuation. However, when this happens, we will never know um, whether it's going to be a continuation or a reversal. OK, so just bear that in mind. Um, but this strategy is fully based on the Asian session, which is this session here and is based on the London session which is going to be here. Okay, so how does this work and how um, how best can we use this? So essentially what you need to realize is, um, and before I actually go any further, this is ideally for those who can actually trade the London session. If you can't trade the London session, unfortunately, this video is not for you, okay? Because this, uh, this strategy plays out in the first two or three hours of the London session open. The reason being is because the first two to three hours is the most liquid time in the market. So this strategy is fully based on liquidity. That's literally all it is. And as we know, liquidity is essentially the fuel of the market. OK, without liquidity, the market wouldn't function. So with that being said, how to get the highest probability out of this strategy? So the Asian session is generally known to be a consolidating, uh, consolidating market or ranging market. Now, what do we know about the ranging market? Now, when markets are ranging, uh, when markets are ranging like this, okay, that's very rough. What do we know? Okay, given the whole theory about order blocks and how the how the markets actually move, what is happening when the markets are ranging? When the markets are ranging, there's an equilibrium between uh, the buyers and sellers. Okay, so at this point, we won't be looking to enter. All right. But what is essentially happening is there's an enticement or inducement of buyers and sellers going on at this point. What tends to happen um, during this is you would have you would have a move which either entices um, sellers or buyers, and then you'll have an impulsive move. Now, what this is doing in this case, okay, it's grabbing liquidity from both ends, okay. It doesn't always happen like this, but it's grabbing liquidity from both ends. Then we have an impulsive move. OK, which grabs a full liquidity from the whole session. OK, and then we have this whole uh, reversal play, OK, which happens at London. OK, if this liquidity grab doesn't happen, fair enough. We tend to have an impulsive move, which grabs liquidity from the either the Asian session high or the Asian session low. And then we wait for that reversal play to happen. Now, this reversal play that's happening here, it does not always react to an order block okay if you have an order block here to the left fair enough it gives you that extra confluence behind taking this trade however we don't necessarily need an order block to actually trade this strategy in that sense okay essentially we're waiting for that liquidity grab and we're going to trade that so with the theory of what an lg actually is that's essentially all we are trading okay so we're looking for a ranging market in the asian session a break of that range and then trading against that, 
okay now as we know with the whole order block strategy and how it works we understand that when you get a range in market a break of that like this okay what does that mean it gives us a footprint to look for a buy or a short depending on the setup from the order block that created that okay that's essentially what we trade using the order block strategy however using the daily pip cycle essentially your targets will be the Asian session low or the Asian session high, depending on whether you're buying or selling, okay? So in this scenario, we're selling and we're gonna be targeting the Asian session low, okay? But in that case, if you do have an order block sitting here and say that this is pro trend, it may be wise to look for, uh, looking to place a TP around that order block or the most refined order block and then looking to go long as you usually would okay bear in mind this is the intraday setup you're generally targeting between 30 and 50 pips normally okay that's um that's the general general move that you would get you won't get any swing trades from this however if for example if trend in this situation was already uh, bearish Okay, if trend was already bearish, then if you get an entry here, you are more than welcome to hold this trade and continue it as a swing. But remember to pay yourself, okay, because we don't know what's going to happen in the market, okay. So that's essentially, for trade management, that's essentially it because it is down to you how you decide to manage your trade. But this is the, essentially, that's the whole theory. Now, sometimes you get uh, Asian ranges which are trending. When when markets are trending like this, uh, when they are trending, uh, for example, uh, let me get rid of that and we can go here. Okay, when the markets are trending, the probability is lower. Why? Because it, the markets are already showing the hand as to what they are looking for. They're already looking for higher prices. However, sometimes, as we know, there's liquidity sitting above every single high and every single low yeah so we know liquidity is sitting here um in this case for um and liquidity is sitting here okay we know that so it could just grab liquidity from these highs and then continue however what i've realized is from testing is that the probability is lower because generally what you'll get is you'll get a pro trend move price will come and react to this order block and then continue going in that sense, okay? As you would generally trade using the OB strategy. So ideally looking for that range in market in Asian session is probably your best bet. Um, but it's down to you to find um, from your own testing to see what you prefer. For me personally, and I'm not saying that you have to do it, but for me personally, I prefer to have a ranging market in the Asian session and then trading the uh, liquidity grab from that. Okay, so let's look at this example. Okay, so what indicators can you use to make this easier? So essentially the best, um, the easiest one is looking for the sessions indicator. Uh, I just use this one and it looks quite ugly when it comes onto the, where is it then? Okay, it's loading, wherever it is. Uh, come on, okay. Uh, while that is loading, I'm gonna take off London and New York and just highlight uh, the Asia session. I don't know where. Don't know why it's taking so long. Um, let me try that again. Uh, and you can use any sessions indicator that you prefer. There we go. It's there. Um, let me get rid of these two and let me make this to a color I prefer. Okay, you don't have to copy me. That is completely down to you. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is you don't need to worry about what's happened before. However, as I said, if there's an order block that you can mark out, that you can see where the price can potentially go to then fair enough. However, it's not necessary because bear in mind, we essentially are trading an LG. Now, in terms of a trending market, that would be a trending market. A ranging market is when you see sideways movement. This whole move here, it's fine because uh, this could be the start of the liquidity grab, okay? But generally when you get a trending market, you should be able to distinguish quite easily. That's trending, that's trending, uh, that's not trending, that is more sideways, but it can be classed as trending because this is the hourly try. But for me, that would be sideways movement. So, uh, sorry, uh, that would be, uh, yeah, that would be sideways movement. That is a ranging market. Um, that's ranging, ranging, ranging. Oh, this is quite ranging, ranging, trending, purely because this is um, is a, already a bearish trend and it's continuing. 
uh, ranging, ranging, trending, ranging. Oh, I'm sure you can, that's trending actually, sorry. That's trending, 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 ranging. Okay, that's very nice actually, to be fair. But okay, let's go back to where we were. So once you identify, you need to mark out your Asian high and your Asian low. So my Asian high is here and my Asian low is here, okay? And all you need to do is set your alert to this point. Once this happens, so you do need to wake up just before London session so you can actually get prepared to do this because sometimes the break of the session does happen straight away. So be sure you don't miss that. Okay, so once that's happened, you need to wait for uh, this to break. Now, generally using the hourly is probably the best time frame to do so. Um, to actually mark out your Asian session high or low. It's completely up to you. For me, the hourly is just visually easier. Um, but yeah, that is down to you. Okay, so essentially we just need to wait for that break of uh, the session. So step one, it's marking out your Asian, Asian, Asian session range high and low, and then waiting for the break. Step two is waiting for that break, which happens here. Now the break has happened, my alerts can off, and that's when I go instantly to my lower time frame to find the entry. Now, it's completely up to you what time frame you are comfortable with. Now, I generally just go to the lowest time frame that I feel that I see fit. And I found this example to give you a clear example, the 30 second gave me a clear entry. Um, whether I would have taken this or not, I don't know, because this is a, basically a back-tested uh, trade. Whether I would have taken this, as I said, I don't know. Um, but now it's broken, we just need to look for our two rules. Simple as that. So in this case, let's mark out our range high and range low, as we can see price here. So range high is here, range low. Where is it? There we go. Okay, let's wait for a break of this range. Okay, now we've broken this range. Uh, we can mark our range low, uh, which is here. Uh, where is it? There we go. And the order block in this situation is here. So at this point, I can place a trade. Uh, I can place a limit order on this order block, um, which actually, I'm not going to put on the screen because it will make it a bit blurry because I know uh, where price goes. Uh, let's go. So at this point, I would have placed an order here. And now we've just created this high and we created this high, pulled back and then broke. So now we've got our successful retrace. So in this situation, we've got two, we've got both our entry types. Um, we've got entry type one and entry type two. Okay, now if you wanna wait for your, oh gosh. Now, how to manage multiple POIs, you, sh you guys should already know. Um, if you don't know, go to the FAQ section and you can see there's a video specifically uh, to uh, specifically telling you how to manage that. So now we've uh, identified where we want to buy buy from. Essentially, we're going to place our orders. So we're going to place the order on the bottom one. Let's move that down here. Sorry. And the order block is here. And we can say, I don't know, three pips on this one just to give it uh, space for spread. And now in terms of target, your target is going to be the range high, which is going to be here. Uh, however, if it was pro trend, then you could potentially just leave a, uh, take partial this point and leave a small amount of volume to continue. Um, and then obviously, depending on how you want to take it, uh, as you guys know by now that I generally take both anyway, uh, depending on how I want to approach it. Now, to be honest, in this situation, um, I will take both anyway, but generally, because of this, there's not really much of a imbalance. I mean, there's days imbalance here, but generally when there's a big, yeah, the only reason why I'll pick the uh, the extreme one, if there was a huge move with a lot, like this move here, right? We've got an impulsive move and a successful retrace. I would not have taken a trade from the successful retrace, given the amount of imbalance that is sitting here. Whereas here, the imbalance is only the small little bit. So uh, I would rather take uh, the entry from both of them. So if this one fails, I don't really care because I have full reasoning as to why I took it. So should I really be concerned? No. So that's the benefit of trading with a rule-based strategy is that you know you take away the whole guesswork and you sort of just follow the rules and accept the fact that you will lose and you will win. Okay. So now that I've done this, uh, I'll place my order, simple as that, and I'll place my TP and price just triggers perfectly, uh, comes back a few times, and then off we go. And then, um, let me let this play out actually. Let's just go to, I don't know, let's go to the hourly. Oh gosh, uh, sorry. Uh, 
I don't know if it was that one that it was moving, but we know he goes straight to TP at this point. Okay, TP was hit and it made full sense. So let's try and break down this trade and see what happened, okay? So we had a break of the Asian range low. What does that mean? Liquidity was grabbed. Liquidity was grabbed and all we're doing is trading the shift in market structure, which happened here, okay? And we obviously understand the fact that the that the market is fractal by nature so whatever happens on the lower time frame will replicate on the higher time frame okay we took this trade with confidence off the off the successful retrace which had full reasoning as to why we would take it and um yeah and we held for tp if we didn't want to hold for tp and we wanted to uh play hold it as a swing okay we would only do that if it was pro trend okay um, generally, if you hold it, for, if generally if you want to leave a, a small volume, then, then so be it. That's completely up to you if you want to do so. Okay, but let's think about the overview of the strategy. What gives it? A, what is high probability? High probability is when you get a ranging market. If you get a trending market, then don't really. I wouldn't bother, purely because it it wouldn't really make sense. Okay, uh, I don't feel that uh, there's no reason because. The whole reason why, the whole reason why we want a ranging market is because we want that equilibrium between the buyers and sellers, and then we want that clear liquidity hunt, and that liquidity hunt is what we are trading. So we are trading an LG in that sense. So we basically want this whole accumulation and then a break of that range, and then we're going to trade that uh, liquidity grab. Okay, trade after that liquidity grab. That's essentially a whole basis of this strategy which sort of uh counteracts uh the order block strategy in that in that sense however we are simply just aiming for the end uh the the end of the range so if you're looking if you're looking to go long you're going to aim for the range high if you're looking to go short you're going to aim for the range low simple as that so what i suggest doing from this video and i hope this video has uh been clear enough uh what i suggest doing is back testing this as much as possible Make sure you read through the PDF. In terms of what pairs to trade, generally GBP, Euro and USD pairs are the most liquid pairs to trade. And you want to trade the most liquid pairs uh, purely because you want tight spreads and you want to trade the most liquid pairs at the most liquid times. So uh, generally just focus on those pairs. However, you can try on any other pair and see what you're comfortable with. But um, because, you know, you don't have to take my advice, but it's completely up to you. Um, but yeah, just bear in mind that this is an edge and as long as you can understand the logic and the theory behind it, you should be okay. Um, if you don't understand the logic and theory, then don't trade it. Don't trade it purely based on the rules. You still need to understand, you need to still need to have that background understanding in order to uh, actually use this strategy, strategy effectively. But for now, I'll leave you guys be and I hope that you've enjoyed this video and trade safe.